We've only got seven minutes left with the congressman. I'm going to skip this break so we have time to do that. It's a network break. Uh, and before he leaves, we're going to talk about his new book, In the Fed, a really a manifesto, a constitution against this abomination, one arm of this larger private crime syndicate. But, Congressman, A, what can we do briefly to fight and, 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 and help you and others that are leading this charge to, de to defeat the Fed quicker in this battle, uh, in this war for truth? A, and then B, what do you think their counter strikes are going to be? The Governor's Association a month ago wrote a letter uh, to the Pentagon and the White House saying, what are you doing saying 379,000 troops they now want for Brigade Homeland through NORTHCOM? Uh, and that's also in the Progressive and AP. Uh, they are, I don't know if you've seen this, suddenly we're getting YouTube videos from Kingman, Arizona to Louisville, Kentucky, of regular National Guard and Army running checkpoints, sir, searching people. We've gone and interviewed them now. And it appears that we're seeing a slow takeover and, Former congressman, former Republican leader, was in the Dallas Morning News. Um, Dick Armey, just giving you a quick briefing in case you, I'm sure you know about most of it, saying, yes, he believes Obama may use the flu scare to kind of smoke screen passing health care, gun control, open borders, uh, financial reform, giving the banks more power. So can you speak to what we can do to fight these people and to the whole police state that's really expanding right now? Well, I'm afraid Posse Comitatus is about dead, according, you know, according to what Obama uh, wants. You know, when they passed the HIPAA law, HIPAA law was the one that said that they were going to protect your medical privacy. In actuality, it was exactly the opposite. Because in that HIPAA law, it said in case of a national emergency, the government has a right to all your records. Now, you talk about a, a scare. They keep scaring and frightening people, and they put the high executives taking these flu shots and how dangerous it is and on and on. So I think they're almost uh, just welcoming and waiting. Boy, if there's just a little bit more, we can declare all this national emergency stuff. But it's done under, you know, uh, they have set the stage for doing it under medical control and control of disease. It's always, you know, for these wonderful things. But unfortunately, uh, I'm afraid the American people are going to suffer the consequences. But uh, all we can do is expose them for what they are, and hopefully the American people will wake up. Well, this really hit home for me, and I've talked to the Pittsburgh, the county that Pittsburgh uh, is in. Uh, you grew up there. What's the name of the county? A Allegheny. Yeah, Allegheny. And I talked to the police officer. We got his name. My guys were trying to interview the military and trying to ask him, because there's 2,500 of them there, including regular Army and Air Force along with National Guard, they said, man, we speak to your public relations officer. And they said, no, we're not going to talk to you. Get out of here. And they followed him, got their license plate, and then called up posing as the rental car company, the police department did. And, and then when they told him who they were, the, the, the police officer switched gears and said, well, you're now on terror databases. You'll never get off of it. Laughed at him. And I, and my, my employees are freaked out. These are just camera guys I've hired. And I called the police officer and I said, did you really do that? And he said, yeah, I did that. He, th he thought it was funny to ruin people's lives. Yeah. No, that's, that, that's pretty bad. That, uh, I, we, we don't know how many is doing that, but people enjoy doing that. They, they get this sense of superiority and they have this power, but it, it's sort of pervasive throughout the system. Anybody that has this power, I mean, IRS agents love it and, and they, uh, just like to lord it over other people. But people of true worth, like yourself, are incredibly humble. I, I, I wish we could get these control freaks to realize how fulfilling it is to be good. Uh, I, I hope we can uh, convert some people. I think the true satisfaction in life comes from, uh, you, you know, being productive, uh, producing something of worth, uh, worthwhile, and being able to take care of oneself. But most people, you know, we're oriented towards saying that, uh, the only way that you can be moral and upright is to have a welfare state to make sure everybody's taken care of. Steal from one group and give to another. But I, I believe true satisfaction for individuals comes from work, hard effort, and the satisfaction that you can take care of yourself and your family, regardless of whether you know you're very wealthy or not wealthy, but you maximized your abilities. Today, we do everything to de-emphasize. Uh, the use of our abilities to assume responsibility for ourselves. Well, they want us dependent so they can control us, the classic sharecropper system. Right. Two final questions. We're going to let you go, Congressman, okay. and we admire you, and we're praying for you in the hearings tomorrow. Uh, in closing, tell us about In the Fed, the new book coming out, and uh, please give us your take on when you believe the dollar will die. 
Well, on the dollar, I don't know. Uh, nobody knows exactly when. Could come any time, but my guess is it's going to be a couple more years yet. And it'll be uh, devastating? Uh, I, I really do. I think that's going to be a very bad time, a lot worse than what we've seen so far. And it's going to be, uh, that's when there's more likely to be riots in the street because people are going to be very, very angry. They're already angry, but they'll get much angrier. I just hope they can direct their attention the right way. And the Fed has been out for a week and it's doing, uh, pretty well. The best vote for our movement is to buy a book because it's a political vote on this. The, the more books you sell and the more you show up on the New York Times list, uh, the better off it is. And just as a set aside, I do not take personal benefits from this. This, this book was donated to the Free Foundation. So I can push the sales of this book not for personal gain. But it is a vote. It is a vote in many ways. If we can get it up to number one, which the revolution was for a short period of time, it will be noticed. It will be noticed. So buying one, two, or three books that are not all that expensive will be a vote that sends a message to a lot of people. And you're not taking personal gain. I've read the book. It's incredibly powerful. It is a manifesto against tyranny. Folks, get in the Fed. Even if you know all about it, buy 20 copies. Give it to friends, family, neighbors. You can go to Amazon, bookstores everywhere. Uh, where are some other places they can link through and get it? Where's the best place to buy it, Congressman? Well, I imagine the best price is probably Amazon. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can go to, uh, uh, you know, uh, campaignforliberty.com, too, and get it through there. I'm sure it will be available for a lot of websites. But right now, the quickest way to get it recorded is Amazon. In the Fed by Congressman Ron Paul, climbing up the top charts. Sir, we have 30 seconds left. Final comment. All I know is that we're making progress, and I am very pleased. I just hope we can continue this way. And if we do our job, we, we can win this, but we live in very dangerous times. God bless you, sir. Godspeed, and say hi to Carol and the rest of the family, and say hi to Wayne and everybody for us. And, again, we'll see you next time. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. There goes Congressman Ron Paul, ladies and gentlemen.